Hello, I'm Dan Alford with Arc Specialties. Today's topic is pipe welding. I'm going to give you a bit of the history of the process. We're going to talk about the challenges of the process. We're going to talk about why the people that can make the pipe welds are called the welder with the golden arm. We're going to talk about some recent advances we've had here at Arc Specialties in pipe welding, and we're going to talk about the future. Let's get into the details. So what makes pipe welding so different from structural welds, for example? I've narrowed it down to two things, quality and the challenges of making the weld. By their nature, pipe welds require absolute integrity. Pipe failures can be devastating and they're completely intolerable. The second thing is the challenge of a single-sided full penetration weld. Let's talk about that for a second. When you're fillet welding or making most other types of weld, you're penetrating into the part, but you're not trying to penetrate all the way through the part. In pipe welding, you're welding from the outside, but we expect to get a good weld on the inside of the pipe. This is the definition of single-sided full penetration welding. Extremely challenging. In effect, you're making two welds, one on the OD and one on the ID at the same time. Historically, the solution to both these problems of quality and the ability to adapt to varying parts is solved by human beings. Humans can adapt to any changing condition, and by being present for the entire weld, they can ensure good part quality. So let's talk about joint design. Let's go back to fillet weld. Fillet weld is a relatively simple part. It's a T-joint. You're trying to weld these two pieces together. You make a weld here. You have some penetration. That's a good weld. You notice all this area here is not fused. On a pipe weld, this is completely intolerable. This is what makes fillet weld so easy, pipe weld so challenging. So, let's talk about some pipe joints. Here's the easiest pipe joint. This is the part one, part two. What we're going to do is put a single weld on the inside, then we'll start welding the outside. We penetrate this area here, and then we cap the part out. Now we have a full penetration weld, weld all the way through from the top to the bottom without having to do it from one side. This is great, except in most cases, you can't access the inside of the part, so two-sided welding is not an option. So let's talk about various single-sided techniques. This is called a J-prep. This is a joint which is easy to automate, easy to weld. Why is that? Because we typically have zero opening here, so zero is easy to reproduce. We don't have variation in lands or the thickness at the bottom. So this is the type of joint that I've always been willing to automate from single-sided welding for my whole career. You make a weld here, you fuse this area, then you cap it out. It's a great technique. Why is this not used everywhere? Because you have to machine this joint. I have a lot of pushback from industry. They don't want to do J-preps. If they do, I'll take the job. We'll automate it. But we need to be able to automate other types of joints. Let's talk about a really great technique called keyhole welding. In keyhole welding, you have a square butt joint like this, and then we're actually using a plasma torch to punch through, in effect, cutting a hole in the part, fusing the entire joint in a single pass. This technique is great, and it would be used universally, except it requires extremely precise joints. And this requires that you actually machine the joints beforehand. It's rarely done. So this doesn't work in the real world unless you have extremely accurate parts. Of course, the easy solution is to have backing behind the weld. This could be a backing ring, it could be ceramic tape, or it could be built into the joint. One of my favorite joints is like this, built-in backing, second part's over here. You make the root weld here, hot pass, and cap. You have a full penetration weld that's easy to make because we have the metal backing in the back. Unfortunately, you've got a crevice here, you have a stress riser, so this joint has limited application. So the bottom line is, if you can do a two-sided weld, that's a sure bet. If you could give me J-prep, we can automate that for you. If you could do keyhole welding with very good straight square edges, you would do that. But that's not the real world. All pipe, all fittings come with a V-bevel already prepared on the end of the joint. So here's one side of the part. There's the land. We'll draw the other side of the part. The length right here on the flat portion is called the land. This is a critical variable which can't seem to be held very accurately. And then there's the gap. We want between a sixteenth and maybe three sixteenths. Unfortunately, even that range requires adaptive control to weld successfully. Then we also have difference in part height. This is called high-low. All these variables combine to make this a very challenging weld to make. 
And a human being can do this because they adapt to these changes on the fly and still make a good weld. They'll put the root weld in here with good penetration, good inside weld, a hot pass, and then a cap. This has traditionally been the solution because we have no way to measure and adapt to these four variables that are so critical. This is weld center line, root opening, land, and high-low. Easy for a human being to do, very challenging for a robot for a couple of different reasons, and it all goes back to dimensional inaccuracy. So let me redraw this without a weld. This is called root opening, the distance between the two parts quite variable. We'll see everything from a sixteenth to three sixteenths, and that, that's, a, that's still a good tight range, but that's too much of a variation for us to weld blindly without changing our parameters. This distance right here, the distance in height between the two parts, is called high-low. This can vary quite a bit also and causes all sorts of problems in welding. This is called the land length, and the land length is quite variable in these parts. Plus, we don't really know where the joint is in space. We don't know the run out. So with all these variables combined, it's a very challenging joint to automate. Very hard for a robot to do. So in the last few years, three technologies have matured to a point that we're able to combine these technologies and tackle this problem. The three technologies are collaborative robots, advanced sensors, and advanced waveforms and welding machines. We have to use collaborative robots because they're going to be working around people and they must be safe. We need advanced sensors for measuring and mapping this joint. We're using 2D lasers to map this entire joint. We're going to determine the root opening, the high-low, the run out and the center line of these parts, map the entire weld, and then create the optimized weld program to handle these variations in these parts. And the third piece of the puzzle was advanced waveforms. We're running a Miller RMD power supply on this one. Miller RMD allows us to handle any joint gap all the way from 1 16th to 3 16th. That's quite a wide range. Unfortunately, it won't do it by itself. When you're welding the tight grooves, we have to run a stringer bead. When we're welding the wide grooves, we need to oscillate and slow down. That's the point of our AI pipe bot. It mapped the joint beforehand, and it decided where we could run stringers, where we could run oscillation, and then it optimized the entire weld just like a human being would do. So let's watch an AI pipe bot make a weld. First step is it picks up the laser and it finds the joint. This allows the operator to never touch the teach pin at all. We've identified where the joint is in space, we've centered on it, and then we rotate the pipe to map the joint. What are we looking for? We're looking for joint gap. That's the primary variable. We're also looking for high-low. We're looking for center line variation. We're looking for run out in the pipe. And by mapping all of these things, then we're able to create a program that can handle all these different variations in the part. Finally, the robot will decide what the largest tack is and position that tack for the start of the weld. We position the torch for doing downhand welding with the RMD short circuiting transfer process, and we start the arc. As we're moving around the joint, depending upon the joint gap, you'll see the robot either run stringer beads or oscillation, depending on the width of the groove. As the robot works its way around the root weld, it knows where all the tacks are. And as it approaches a tack, it'll actually change welding parameters to ensure complete fusion of the tack and then revert back to good welding parameters as it leaves the tack. This is all a part of the pre-mapped programming. After it finishes the root weld, it can either stop for cleaning or continue to weld. But we're not running the hot fill and cat passes with RMD short circuiting transfer. Instead, we're switching to pulse spray. We're using a single gas that allows both of these welding processes to be done. And you'll also see that we've repositioned the torch closer to top dead center because pulse spray requires a completely different set of welding parameters. Pulse spray is a much hotter process, better sidewall fusion, much better for weld integrity but it's simply not applicable for the root. So this process actually requires two different welding techniques, RMD short arc for the root, pulse spray for the hot fill and cap passes. Once you finish a weld, you must inspect it. The first step is visual. You look at the root. We have both minimum and maximum penetration limits on the root pass. We're also looking for good sidewall fusion in the root. Then you move to the outside. You look at the cap pass. Do you have good edge fusion? Do you have sufficient fill? or is it excessive? If it passes this, then we go on to a combination of non-destructive and destructive testing. For destructive testing, we use guided bends. So you take a pipe well like this, and we cut out a section of a known width, you end up with a piece like this, and then we're go what we're going to do is bend this into a U-shape around 
a plunger of a known radius. What we're trying to do is induce a specific amount of stress into the outer fibers of the weld. So if there's any discontinuity in the weld at all, you'll see it in openings and cracks and tears. So this one passed. Guided bins are great for showing weld integrity and good elongation, but they don't inspect the entire length of the weld. To do that, we'll use non-destructive testing. So what we've done is we've x-rayed these welds, and this gives us a chance to look at every inch of the weld. And by using a combination of guided bins and, and radiography, we're able to ensure that the AI pipe bot can create sound welds with good integrity. We chose to develop our full penetration, single-sided pipe welding technology in the 1G rollout position with our AI pipe bot. This simplified the development process and it works fine in spool shops where you're able to rotate the pipe. But what about the rest of the world where the pipe is stationary? In this case, we're developing two new technologies. One is bug and band. We're going to implement the AI pipe bot technology in a bug and band system to orbit around the pipe. We're also going to use two robots, one standing on each side of the part, to make the welds on either side. Look forward to these enhancements in the near future. Since the Arc Specialties AI pipe bot has passed not only guided bins, but now x-rays, we thought we deserved a celebration and a new end effector. Don't need the welding torch for this. Congratulations, you're now a certified pipe welder well done. Good job. This project has been fascinating. It's a culmination of three new technologies. Collaborative robots, not now. Collaborative robots, 2D laser vision, and new waveform welding systems. No, you don't get a raise. If you think that you have an application for full penetration pipe welding that this might fit, give us a call. At Arc Specialties, we thrive on problems. Send us yours.